So in this video we're going to create the buildings from our OCM files. So in here I have already imported my OCM and I filtered out the building parts, which you can see here. And what I will be doing is using the labs building generator to generate out my buildings. So before I will do this, to save some time, I will also cut out a piece of the map. So right now if I would plug in the building generator, we will need to calculate all the buildings I see here on my screen. So to make everything a bit go faster, in here I want to cut out some parts. So I will be using a clip node. So as you can see here, placing down a clip node, we'll then have the option to then cut out different parts of my scene. And as you can see now, I only have a few buildings. So what I want to do here on these buildings is use a for each connected piece. So this means I will loop over each building individually. So in this case, I have 26 buildings. I will loop over them individually. So in here, let's just start with one building and plug this in the building generator. And you can see that by default, it will generate all this geometry. Now we also have some settings here. So first of all, like the floor height. So if I would go back here to my OCM buildings, we have set the level height to four. So we can do this here as well. So we can set it to four. So we have new levels. Now further, we also have here some primary and secondary options. So primary is for our main wall. Secondary is for top ledge and bottom ledge. So you can enable and disable this. So now the bottom edges are gone, but we can also disable the top edges. So, but in this case, I'm only using the top edge. So I actually want to enable this back. And now I want to, instead of having this plain geometry, I want to have a custom model. So therefore we need the other node called the building uh, generator utility tools. And in here I can then have a file node for my geometry. So in here, I will look up my FBX file and load in my file. So I've loaded my file and let's plug this in. So now I need to give this a proper name. We can just call it, for example, wall zero uh, one. Then we also need to fill in the dimensions of this wall. So we can always double check the spreadsheet. We can filter out here what the highest values are. So in my case, they are point 0.95 and one in the height. So this can then be plugged in in the building generator. So we have to fill in here the wall zero one. And now our wall is being replaced. So instead of this geometry, we have now our real modular model that I want to use. So this is the process that I'm going to do for all modular models. So I'm going to load in my model and I'm going to give it the proper name and I'm also going to set the dimensions. So this might take some time and I'm going to skip this part. As you can see over here, I have now loaded in all these models. So all with the file node and I have assigned different kinds of sizes and so on. So I'm going to just connect the merge node here and plug that in here. So we can just merge all these different modules together and we can then filter out by name. Also to clean up the file a bit or the structure of my node, I can here click on the minus icon and it will collapse this whole structure. So I'm going to go back here to my building generator and I'm going to fill in the new names over here. So I filled in all these values. Now we can play around here with more of the values that we have in the building generator. Like we can tweak maybe the floor height a bit so it fits a bit better. So maybe 3.8 would be fine. Then we can also here have an option. You will find an option somewhere to scale the model. So if you click this, the models will be scaled on the space they have. So in here, actually, this piece right here, all these pieces are new geometry being created for each building so if there is enough is there when there is not enough space it will generate new geometry if you don't want that we can then have a scale the model feature which then fits model in place now to make this building more interesting we want to have different variations on different floors 
So here at the bottom, we have a override floor. So we can just click on this plus icon and now we have different options. So by default here, it will set floor index to zero, which means the bottom floor. And I can now overwrite what wall used. So I have a specific new wall for the bottom, for example. As you can see here, now I have these arches going on. And we can also, for example, here to set the height size so we can play around with the height values. This way we can have more variations in our building. So we can keep adding overrides to have different layers on your buildings. So we can just plug this in over here and see what it looks. So here's my first look of my buildings. So I have these quite cool buildings made out of my modular pieces. What I also noticed here is that sometimes we can have this gap. So why is this happening? If I would go back to my original OCM information, I can see that there is this line here, but we need to get rid of this line. So I will use here a dissolve flatten edges. So place that node over here and we just increase this a little bit and you can see that we got rid of that line over here. So that will fix that issue. Now further from here, if we want to have our, our building being instanced, we need to use the second output, which is a cloud point. So we will use this cloud points for our instancing. So what I will be doing over here is I'm going to blast away all the modular pieces. So in over here, I'm going to use a blast node. And I want to delete all the slop and the generated slop. And I want to reverse this, so delete non-selected. So this is the unique geometry that is being generated, and I want to keep this. Then I'm going to merge this as well. So merge. And I want to merge this with here the points. So we can see that we now have points, and on these points we want to assign an instance to use in Unreal, for example. Also what we can do here is just make a group here and call this the geometry that is left over. So geo that's left over just so I can easily afterwards can call this group. Now other interesting information to have here is when I go back up here when I had my basic shapes in the attribute spreadsheet I have a attribute that's for example called uh, building. So if I look for this, we have here building and sometimes it can say it's an apartment or an office or something else. So we can use this in information to then have a variation later on. So what I want to do is I want to have a promotion. So attribute promote. And I'm going to promote that from primitive to points. So this building. I'm going to set this to maximum and I want to copy this attribute back into my system. So copy attributes and instead of color, we can fill in our building. So now if I looked into my spreadsheet and under points, I have now called an attribute building. So when we generate this, so now so now here we have information for office or apartments and so on. So this is just to show you that you can keep this information from the OCM files into our geometry over here. So you can just copy this information. What can also be interesting is that we have the number of buildings. So what you could do is you can go here, create a metadata import, and then we can create an attribute. So attribute creates, and I can, for example, name this building ID. And then this can be a point of a flow type. And then we're just going to ask the detail value from the node I just added, which was the, which is here then the for each begin metadata. And in this note, I want to ask the number of iterations. 
so iteration then zero so i'm gonna add so i'm gonna go into this node and ask the iteration number and i'm gonna store this in here so let's calculate this as well so now i have here a, a building id which then we, which we can use later on for example to filter out on the building number so if i want to have building 5 to have a different look i can then easily call building 5 and give it a different look now for further working with this i'm actually going to lock the result because every time i make a change it want to recalculate the system so i'm just going to lock in the result so we don't have to always recalculate what's going on so now here i want to use the split node so we can split our results and again i want to use the geometry left and now i can switch between the points and the geometry so i can make a difference for our instancing so in this case i want to reverse it because i'm going to first work with the points so which you can see here now from here we can use an other split node and then we can make a difference between which building it is so what we can fill in here is we can ask the building attribute so which i just stored here so we can ask this building value if it's a certain type so we can say at building is it equal to for example the uh, office then i want to see only the office part so of course we also need to set this to points and now i have only the office building so this is then for example my office we can also keep adding information so i can copy this and i can add for example the apartments as well so apartments and now i have uh, included the apartments information here as well so in here is just showing you that you can use these different informations to have different modular models now further on we want to assign on each point a attribute called instancing to do this we're going to use a labs tool called a value remapping or replace so let's plug this in over here and by default it's going to look at the attributes called name so in our case the attribute name and here we have our model stored the name of our model being used so a corner a wall a top wall a border and so on so we can look on these attributes now we can add these attributes by adding this plus icon but also new here is a button for initializing values and you, when you click this it's going to automatically look at all the different values we have and this is then very useful so for all these models i want to create an unreal instance for then using a instance from unreal so in here only thing i don't need an instance is actually for the slide slope which is this generated geometry so i'm gonna click on the remove icon over here and then now i want to change the attribute from this value to another value what is also important here before we can do this we also want to rename it so we want to rename it to the unreal instance attribute and now here i have an unreal instance now let's go to unreal and grab a, a reference so here in unreal what will we doing to get our uh, reference for our instance i'm going to go to the model that i want to have and right click and copy reference over here so click on this and then going back in Houdini. so in this case i have a reference for the border and i'm just going to copy paste the reference from unreal and now it says static mesh file if i if i look to my attributes now we will now have we will now see here the static mesh names which is then a part to the mesh there so we will have to do this for each individual uh, model so we'll go back to unreal get the pad paste the pad in here so i'm going to skip this part so here everything is now set up for an instance so we all have that ready to go 
Now in here I have this split and I have also another variation. So what you could do is just copy this node and we could start uh, linking other models in here depending on what you want. Also here is another example. What I did here is a wrangle and I said on the first floor I want to have a different corner model and I changed the name attribute from the normal corner model to a corner bottom model. Also the left is then a left bottom model. So I just changed these names and now in here I have added a new model slot for the new bottom corners that I have. So once this is set up, we can then merge these together. So this is set up. And then we have still here the geometry that is left over. And we can also merge this further down here. Now, most of the time, what I will be doing is I want to have two merge nodes, one for instances. So in here, these are all uh, instance. And I'll want to have another in merge node, and this is for all uh, geometry. So geometry. So it's important to know that you need to keep this separately, and then on the end you're gonna merge first the instance and then the geometry. So this is just important to know when you're working with instances. So now I want to test this out. So we're gonna select the whole thing over here, and we're gonna create a digital asset. So I'm going to type a shift C, which will create this sub level and right click, create digital asset and give it the proper name. So now this is being saved. We now have this menu to add further parameters. So what you could expose is, for example, the file that is being used, the OCM file. But in this case, I'm not going to fill in anything. So now let's jump into Unreal and see if this is working. Now here I'm in Unreal. I have the plugin installed. And I can now just drag and drop my file and after a moment our city is then being calculated. And as you can see here, everything is working as it's supposed to be. So I have all my walls being set up and I have different kind of buildings. So in here I have these buildings with a different uh, color here and then I have these green ones. So that's pretty cool already see working so also here I can see different variations as well so that already works nicely so this was the video for generating buildings from OCM files so from here you can then keep pushing it further add more variations add for example an interesting roof so we have some template geometry here but you can adjust this more to a roof shape if you want to or you can just delete it so I hope you enjoyed this video and next video we'll then be covering some of the road systems so we can actually have a road. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one.